panelists are always. I just got it. Started the video the video recording. So there you go. All right, yeah, there so you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Technology, baby. It's just crazy. <laughs> that it is. That it is. So, anyways, what I was just highlighting was the macro versus the, the microeconomics and seeing how our, our markets are responding to what is being said at the macro level, but not really being adhered to or, or the micro levels not being listened to. So, yeah. You know, so, I always look forward to getting your uh, input on all this stuff. So let's let's do it. Let's knock this baby out. You got you got the hour. I do. So right. make sure that on time here. Okay. Let's go. You got that started. I got that there. Let me make sure. Can I have a... Okay, here we go. You're looking good, by the way, man. Oh, thank you, brother. You know, I gotta tell you, and I'm gonna be doing some video on this. I had my um I had my physical first time I had a physical in almost five years because yeah. Good. And I was always very, very on top of my game doing this as recording, letting everybody know about yep. all this. My uh, my labs came back very, very, very good. Dr. Jameson was like, you are, this is the best labs you've had in your life since I've been seeing you as an adult. And I'm like, well, I've been working really hard at it. I've been really trying hard to get things dialed in. He says, but there's one thing. There's always one thing, isn't it, Craig? You know, oh, it's always yeah. And he's like, why are you still doing so much coffee? Why you got to get off the coffee. You got to get off the caffeine. The caffeine is not helping you. And for this time, because we've had this, not an argument, we've had this discussion. Right. And I can find plenty of um, research on the positives, the negatives. You can find anything you want. You can find your biased slant on anything you really want. Right. So he, but this time, he said it in a way that was like, it's not helping you. And I'm like, I'm all about my prime objective model that I'm doing now with performance and right. eliminating all of the things that don't help you get to that point. And so it clicked in my head and I'm like, okay, I'm done. So I came home and Sandy was like, she says, that's stupid. And I was like, well, you know, that's really not very nice of you to say that to me, but you know, <laughs> But, she's, but she was looking out for me because she wanted, she says, you know, there's the the amount that you've consumed over the last 40 plus years, yep. there's going to be huge withdrawal. And I'm like, I don't care. I, I'm not going to do the one cup. I'm not that kind of guy. I can't do the one drink. Right. I don't know how my right. brain works. So it's like, it's, it's out. It's got to go. And so right. I am, that was what last Wednesday. So I went through the two days of, pain and um just foggy just you know but i've fought, just charged <laughs> through this and um and i did some reading and i did some video stuff um this weekend watching you know on my bike and the benefits and the the, the, the downsides of caffeine and for a guy like me because like dr j said he said you know 25 years ago 30 years ago he said this was a different conversation but now you're 64 years old and it's like this is he says you, you he said, there's no benefit to this at, at all for you. You are doing right. everything right. You're getting all the benefits of everything you're doing right. Why would you want to diminish that? And right. that's where it clicked in my head. I was like, okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, I got a, I still have little bits here and there of, and it'll be about from what I've read two weeks, but right. I'm, I'm good. I mean, it's like, I've already made it seven days, uh, five days now. So it's like, I'm done. And it's just going to be the way it's going to be. And I can already, I can already see a difference. Of course, it could be, it, it could be, um, like it could be psychosomatic. It could be whatever. I don't care. I, you know, it's like, it's, 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 it doesn't add up to help me. And so, but so thank you for saying, uh, you know, looking good. Cause working hard at it. We've got to stay healthy for the kids. Got to stay healthy for all of our fans and all of our work. And it's just like all of our work, Craig is so damn important with <laughs> all of this. And it's like, um, and by the way, I did, um, I did bring you up again with, with, um, with Roy Simon. Yeah. He noticed your, he noticed your, um, something in the, in their 
community bulletin or, or the the thing that you guys do at the church and he's probably yeah probably yeah. saint gerard or saint saint martha's or i don't know if it goes to saint martha's or saint gerard's or a lot of different um, ones. they bounce all over there we picked we picked them up for dinner on saturday and they were downtown at the uh the big cathedral um good. so that's i'm still working on that with him and um you know, I just want to, I want you two guys just to get together. I want you just to meet him. I, I want him right. to meet you to meet him and just be friends because it's just, you can't get enough good people in your life. Yep. And that's that story. So, yep. So anyways, yep. thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. And, um, oh, pleasure. And off bro. I mean, it's just, I, I had a feeling I was hoping I was a little anxious. My blood pressure was a little high. That was another reason why he says your blood pressure is too high. I'm like, well, you know, I have that white coat syndrome. And Sandy said they took my blood pressure wrong. And I've already gone back and had it checked again. It was fine. Um, and I'm going to be real curious to see as it goes forward, you know, how this affects. Because the chemistry of the thing is really interesting. Caffeine does some really, really, it's a bad, it's it's not a good drug for people that, like me, who are like over As I'm drinking coffee. Well, I mean, you know what? If you could handle it, few. But it's like it I don't know of, if I can handle it. But it's, I mean, it's not like a, it's not like I like the flavor of it either. That's the sad part. It's like I remember when I first started drinking coffee. It was on a construction site with my dad, huh? and uh, I didn't. I forgot my water. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna. Oh, you got some coffee? I'm like, yeah. I guess I need to drink something with this sandwich I'm eating. Yeah, how do you drink this stuff? That yuck. And of course now I'm. You know, and then the funny part is my kids drink it. You know, I'll have my my boys will drink it, and um, uh, my wife will have. She, I, she was the first one who introduced me to to, to cold coffee. Right, I'm like you drink coffee cold. Ew. Okay. Well, I it, guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just. But for me, it was just too much. I was just doing too much, and it's just my my brain works that way. And it's just I yeah. understand. I've gone yep. through enough of it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. caffeine free. I'm drinking herbal tea here, non caffeinated. I'm not going to drink any caffeine at all. I'm watching it. Every, I'm going to look at everything. All of these little, because it's in everything. Damn. Well, hair. I mean, see, even even most recent, I I saw an article or heard an article, but it's it's always a mixture, right? You'll hear the bad things and you hear the good things. You hear the bad things, and then of course I've I've heard because obviously I I pick up on things that are related to Alzheimer's. So my, my dad had Alzheimer's, passed away in his mid-70s. My grandpa had Alzheimer's, passed away in his mid-70s. So my brother, my older brother, Dave, and I are kind of, all right, what do we need to do to keep ourselves healthy? And so I always, I always find uh, something that, you know, if it's related to Alzheimer's, it attach, it attention, gets my attention. And um, one was you know, drinking four cups of coffee a day. It actually helps reduce the chances of getting Alzheimer's by 30%. And I'm like... Does it really help? That's what that was one of my that's one of my rebuttals to Jameson. Yeah. But at this point, it's like I'm way past the four cup thing, and it's just like there's no again, no benefit to me. Right. So, right. Just nice. And of course, they always talk about well, as you're getting older, the other things kind of help out with your uh Alzheimer's. And I'm like, all of it is tied actually just to having a good health and being active. That's exactly right. And That's so with exactly. Alzheimer's, they sit there and think about, all right, you know, keeping the brain active, keeping the, keeping the blood flowing in that area. And I sit there and think about my dad and my, my grandpa, and they had a very sedimentary lifestyle after they'd retired. So okay. I can see, I can see that happening. Absolutely. All right, let's roll. <laughs> all right, let's roll. Welcome to this week's episode of the Tom Matt Show, everybody. Last week, Jane Kurth was here, Trends in Boutique Fitness, with her coursework that's coming and all of the things that she does. Fit Fix Now is the place you want to go to. Jane's been on the show not as many times as our guest today, but she's been on a few because she's solid and she brings really good information. And that's what we're here for. We're here to bring great story and information. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Today, the 2023 year in review, financially, financial fitness episode with Craig, Craig, Craig. We're going to do, we're going to try and split this show in half if possible. It's kind of, you know, Craig drives this thing. It's his 24th visit on the show, which is uh, amazing to two and even two dozen. We're, we're going to split this in half 2023 in review. And then his prognostication crystal ball 
for 2024 and reassure everybody because as everyone knows, Craig's our guy. I do his read. He's he's we, we have all of our refirement zone savings with Craig Styles, and we're happy to have them there because I don't worry about Jack. Nothing. I just go with it, man. I just do this thing over here and we're busy and we're doing our stuff. And then we get to have Craig come in and really kind of dissect it. And that's what we're going to do right now. Craig Styles received his Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from Arizona State University. I've read this bio 23 times. <laughs> yeah, this will be on my 24th. He's got an MBA. That means he's smart, finance. Thank God. You know, he is the uh, creator of the algorithm for desiderary analytics. That's a big thing. We'll talk about that when I do the read in, in the second segment, but we can talk about that as well. That's what puts him over the top. No question about it because it's so complicated. Now you got to have an edge. I mean, there's got to be an edge and it, as a, as a performance coach and trainer, I know all about these things. It's Craig and I were just talking about this pre-show about, you know, the prime objective and the things that are helping you get to your promised land and the things that are holding you back, and those things that are holding you back, you got to sometimes you got to make tough decisions mm-hmm. and get rid of all that stuff. Craig resides in Williamson with his wife, Stephanie, and his this this bio is so old. It started with nine children and now it's at 11. And so we'll let Craig get us all caught up on the fam because, you know, we do the this is your life, the first segment. So I want to welcome back my bro, my brother from another mother for sure. Craig, <laughs> how you doing? I- Hey, Craig. What's happening, bro? Dave DeMarco said to tell you hi. I talked to him this morning. I talked to him every day. He's like, hey, you got Craig coming out. Hey, Craig, Craig, Craig. Yeah. Nope. So, yep. it. recording. Yeah, he spoke with him the other day as well. It's good to, good to see that he's doing well and seeing all the recordings he's doing. So, it's, it's a wonderful thing to catch up with him every now and again. Yeah, he's a good guy. And he's just, uh, you know, he's doing the thing down in, uh, down oh, in Alabama. We're doing our, we're collaborating on work all over the place. And, you know what? If you've if you haven't seen any of Dave's Mad Dog minutes, then you need to go to our website and go to the YouTube channels and check them out because they're pretty they're 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 pretty good. Janey, I mean, yeah, he's he's good. He knows his stuff. So, Craig, before we get into the recap and then yeah. the prognostication, go yeah. right ahead and take take as much time as you want to catch everybody up on all of your wonderful children and what they're doing. I heard about that little incident down that we had to jump on a plane. You want to talk about that? If you, oh, if you, yeah. but I, I heard about that. So it's like, go, go ahead, man. share, share. Yeah. Whatever no, it's this past. Well, I mean, to, to start with, we already knew that we we're going to have a rather busy, busy summer. Personally, my wife and I were back in February, uh, kind of planning out and looking at what our summer is going to look like. And if we're going to, you know, be able to find any, quite frankly, find any time to get away together as a family. But we had several of our friends, kids are getting married, weddings that were taking place. My oldest son, Christian, was graduating uh, in the spring. So we head out to St. Paul, Minnesota for the graduation. Then how many days we're going to be gone for that Turn that into a little bit of a mini vacation. And then uh, my uh, fourth child, Miriam, was graduating from high school. So we had her graduation to kind of plan for and prepare for. So a couple of graduations going on. And in between there, trying to get some time together with the family. Um, and then we had a lot of activities going on with sporting events going on in the weekend. So uh, the dynamic was very busy um, throughout this time period. And so yeah, what you kind of leading up to um, in regards to our our daughter, Miriam. Yeah, she, um, I mean, proud of her in in many respects because she's kind of an entrepreneurial uh, mindset in many areas and had a lot of things going on up here in Michigan, you know, from from honey to uh, working with other uh, individuals to manage their honey hives and and, uh, as well as working on a, a horse breeding farm here locally. Um, she wanted to seek an internship in cow horsing down in the Texas area, found one and was down there for 30 to 45 days or so on a, uh, two month, uh, internship while, uh, she was getting some quarter round posts thrown in the back of the truck because she felt the sting in the bottom of her, of her leg, just above her left ankle. And, uh, she's like, wow, that kind of thought she kind of brushed against a burn nestle or something like that kind of poked her leg but then it started burning a little more than normal and then she'd think well maybe I got stung and then she threw that second cord around because that happened rather quickly looks down and there's a rattlesnake and so she got bit by a rattlesnake and we found that out and it's about three weeks ago now 
And I flew down there uh, same day and was with her through Sunday. So she was in the hospital from a Thursday through a Sunday. And uh, fortunately, I have family that's down there that she could stay with until she was able to get up and, and up and about, but dedicated. Um, she didn't want to give up on her internship and because she felt very obligated to that. So instead of coming home, she stayed with uh, family members down in uh, Texas area. It was only about an hour, hour and a half from where her internship was. And she started back to the internship uh, was today is Monday. So it would have been last week, Thursday, she was dropped off and she went back to work her first full day back after about two to three weeks was on Friday. And so she's got to take it easy. Um, but yeah, it was a scary moment at that point in time. So blessings of her being healthy and strong and was able to get through this. And so I, I keep joking with this is now you're part of that elite group. I don't think there's anybody um, that is, uh, you know, the, the special forces guys in the military that can turn around and say that they've been bitten by a, a rattlesnake. But of course she has the, uh, she has a t-shirt and I was going <laughs> to, when I went back to her apartment to get, you know, some clothes for her when she was in the hospital, I said, Hey, I took a picture and says, do you want me to bring this t-shirt? And of course it's a don't tread on me t-shirt. <laughs> and it's got a coil of a rattlesnake that's there. And I'm like, should I, should I bring this? And she goes, yeah, you could, but I don't think it's clean. So don't bring that. I'm like, okay, not a problem. You know, getting, just... a, getting a phone call that your daughter just got bit by a rattlesnake. I, I can't even imagine. I, I remember the time that Ashley called me, dad, she was on campus. She was a student at Michigan state undergrad. Dad, I just got hit by a bus. And, and <laughs> a story. I mean, she was in her car, pulled out truck next yeah. to her know the thing she's in the right lane pull out boom just when you get the call what wasn't nearly as serious as that but it's like kids right. i mean it's right. just ongoing craig styles with yeah. us today everybody. we're going to do a 2023 year in review 2024 crystal ball we're going to try and split this in half craig we got a minute to go before we go to break so you want to you want to compact everybody all the other family into that minute <laughs> well i think those are yeah Mary got all the plump all the pub today <laughs> <laughs> she did. So, I mean, everybody else is doing well. Michaela's down south, um, actually working on a um, uh, on a show that she's working on. So she's uh, doing a retreat, if you will, with uh, a, a um, musician from the Met, who's actually a former MS, uh, Florida State University um, alum. And so she's doing some shows down there with them. My son, Christian, has been back at home. He's actually doing a lot of little odds and ends jobs, been working in, in landscaping. So he's doing a lot of labor work, if you will. And my other boys, same thing. Just prepping our house right now for winter um, and uh, keeping the farm running. Good for you, man. Good for you. All right. Again, recapping this thing. I'll, I'll carry this through, Craig. We got about 30 seconds to go. 2023 year in review, financial fitness, everybody. Now, when I told when I pitched this idea to Craig on this, it was it was not like you know this is not the most favorite thing in the whole wide world. But he, let's let, let's be honest here, we can't sugarcoat things. We got to talk about the the yep. logistics. I mean, we got to be honest when it comes to our financial fitness, and we got to have the people like Craig. That's why we're with Craig. You got to have the people who are okay with giving you the straight story, and that's what we're going to get here. Coming back when we come out of break here. You're listening to the Tom Ed Show, 2023 Year in Review, Financial Fitness, 2024 Crystal Ball, the second half of the show, with my brother from another mother, Mr. Ameriprise himself, Craig Stiles. We'll be right back. Perfect. All right, Mitch, I did the we'll be right back thing, and he doesn't like me doing that. Oh, well, <laughs> it's just a habit. <laughs> I've gotten better at it though. Okay. I got to do this right for this Craig guy. So you got to bear with me there, Craig. <laughs> I, I like, I love it when you're on the show and then I got to tell you, Hey, and I'm doing the video. It's like you guys, when you're watching this video, Hey, it's all good. The way this is without Craig styles, we're not doing this radio show. I'm telling you that right now, him and Brock, but Craig was the first one to really believe in us. And I'm so grateful to him. I've told him that a million times and I will continue to tell him that. So we're blessed to have him as our, as our guy. And I mean, our friend and all of that good stuff. So here we go. Oh, Back good. to it. That's why you guys got to call Craig, call Craig, Craig, yeah. Craig. I'm going to give you the numbers here right now. Here we go. Second segment of the Tom Matt show is sponsored by my guest today, Craig, Craig, Craig Styles from Ameriprise Financial. You're Ameriprise Financial Advisor. Our Ameriprise Financial Advisor, as I have 
as I've already said, but I'll say it again, full disclosure, all of our refirement zone savings, because I like saying refirement, because I want people to think about retirement refirement. You're going to go one way, or you're going to go the other way. That's up to you. It's your choice. Totally cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to criticize anyone. I'm just saying my path is refirement. When, and in, that's that. I mean, we've been a worry year plus into this thing and it's just, it's awesome. So our Ameriprise financial advisor and hopefully yours, Craig Stiles can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future with the right financial advisor like Craig or any of his, any of his colleagues, life can be ism be brilliant numbers coming at you here, everybody call Craig 1-800-528-1355. 517-483-4893. His email is craig.styles at ampf, ampf, ampf com. Only one time, not three times, okay? I'm just saying that for emphasis. Craig.styles at ampf.com is his email. Offices are located at, nice spot over there, 2400 Lake Lansing Road. Sweet B is in brilliant. Lansing, Michigan, 48912. Again, the Ameriprise family is gigantic. And so if you're listening to this podcast and you're in Florida and you want to get with Craig, get with Craig and he'll get you with somebody. If you want somebody local, he'll make sure that he vets them for you. That's the beauty of all of this with both of our, with our big time sponsors, because they're well connected and they know a lot of people. And that really does help everybody. I'm telling you, WGHN 92.1 FM Grand Haven is our first broadcast station still carrying us. In the weekends over there, WJM 1240 AM carries us multiple times on weekends. They're the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network. Thanks to Stephen Ivy Gruber, WGRW 1340 in Grand Rapids carried us for a long time. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon. There's a lot of stations in the Michigan Talk Network, everybody. So I, I if, and if I'm not mentioning your call letters and you want to send them to me, please do. I'll be happy to do that. Just go to the TomMattShow.com website, send it in the contact box, away you go. Or get with get with Ivy Gruber and just tell her, say, hey, we want Tom to start doing a read for us. I'll be happy to do that. WYPV FM 94.5 up in Mackinac City in the Big Flamethrower, our PBS affiliate at Michigan State University, doing really well over there, 5 o'clock in the afternoons on Sunday. Great spot, 102.3 FM and... That flamethrower, AM870, East Lansing. I want to thank Craig again for creating his proprietary algorithm and desiderary analytics because we are making light of weighted decisions, and that's why you want Craig, all right? And I already said Stephen Ivy Gruber. We have our books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon. Please go over there and check them out. And learn all about Tom's story and get more in-depth background. All right, Craig. Do we need to talk any more about fam? Are we good with that? Or you want to go right into the- I could probably spend the whole segment talking about family. And it's yeah, probably, probably one of my downfalls as it relates to when I when when I have clients come in, they have a couple of kids, we talk about it and they ask about my family. Next thing you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes later, you know, we should probably start talking about your portfolio and how everything's going, what's going on in the markets and stuff. So yes. Okay. <laughs> From that perspective, let's go ahead and jump on what's what's going on in 2022, 2023, what ex- what we anticipate in 2024. So Man, let's start right at the beginning at the, you know, the, the year you want to start at 2022, 2023, they all lead together. I think you got some macro versus micro info. And you said you went to an event at Hillsdale. Yeah. Go right ahead, man. Go ahead. Take it. And, and many, well, just, just to kind of summarize uh, in 2022, we know that, uh, well, obviously the rising interest rates, what's happened in the markets was um, a pretty big downturn and it wasn't as secure for those who are investing in fixed income investments in 2022 either. So many individuals who thought that, well, I'm going to have secure investments, I'm going to have my fixed income uh, portions of my portfolio, that's going to be my cushion because when markets aren't doing so bad, are are doing so well, if you will, the fixed income typically helps to protect the downside of a portfolio, reduce risk as it relates to it. So there was a shock to a lot of individuals at the end of 2022 when they see their fixed income portions of the portfolio being down 15 to 20 percent. And that was supposed to be the areas of protection when you had growth strategies, which could be down 25 to 30 plus percent um, because the fixed income was supposed to be that that cushion, understanding that in uncertain times, growth would take more of a hit. The quickness of the Fed's raising rates really impacted both of those asset classes. The ones that basically did all right were value type strategies or deep value more specifically, which focus on higher dividend yields for specific stocks and companies, if you will. 
those companies actually were flat to, to positive in 2022. Yet in 2023, those same strategies are down a little bit. Fixed income is down a little bit uh, into 2023. Growth strategies actually had a level of rebound where you have some growth strategies are up anywhere from 15 to 40%. We've had a pullback over these last uh, two to three months. A lot of it is because we started, this, comes, this is where the macro versus micro environment comes in. We're focusing so much on a macro overview of what's going on. What's the Fed going to say? What's the Fed going to do? We're not focusing on, well, how good is Apple? How good is Microsoft? How good is IBM? What's going on at the micro level with the businesses and what's progressing that we tend to focus at the macroeconomics globally. And that has been impacting the markets as a whole. And so that um, view, if you will, of, of, where do we find good places for people to place new money? Because that's really the element to where strategies focusing on three, five, and seven years is where I have a greater emphasis when I'm looking for particular strategies. Reason why I look at three, five, and seven years, a full economic cycle has taken place. And so I want to see pretty similar performance in three, five, and seven years. That gives me an indication that the strategy may have had a uh, little volatility within that areas. But I'm also looking at... Um, other other factors such as well one in, one in particular and I always forget the name of it, but it's the global industry classification standards or the GICS if you will that is that is uh, uh, looking at where research is telling um, defensive stocks defensive strategies cyclical stocks cyclical strategies where are we allocating and what strategies are gonna do better in growth environments and which strategies are going to do better in volatile markets, which volatile, we want to be more defensive. In growth environments, we want to be focused more on cyclical type companies or cyclical type strategies. So I started having a greater emphasis and placing a heavier weight in those categories to find asset managers that are already allocated to those particular areas. And that's floating up some areas of some asset managers that find themselves in that upper left-hand quadrant when you're comparing with an index. And what I mean by that upper left-hand quadrant, higher performance, less volatility or less risk. So keeping clients allocated to equities um, to generate the growth that is needed to outpace the higher inflation that we're finding ourselves in presently. Uh, so this way, when we have a greater level of return, we can peel off some funds depending on what their income stream or withdrawal rate needs to be in the years. So all of that's been good. All right, we'll come back. We'll finish. We're going to continue this whole thread, not finish the thread, because this, this is an ongoing performance issue. We're going to come up to break here. Let me reset this thing. 2023 year in review, financial fitness episode. Love doing financial fitness episodes. Very, very important for us to understand and get the straight story from the straightest guy that I know is Craig Stiles. And that's our guest today. And he's going to continue this conversation about the year in review, 2022, 2023. And then we'll do a little prognostication towards the end of the show and see, you know, let's see what happens. Let's, let's give Craig a chance to kind of boil it all down. Oh, yeah. Craig Stiles, Tom Matt. It's the Tom Matt show. Beautiful. Awesome. Getting the right. What's that? And getting the timing in there all right? Yeah, yeah, you're perfect. 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 Okay. This this um this read will go quicker because your read's a little longer, but that's okay because I, I don't do a read, I just talk and just <laughs> where's my mouse at? Where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. Like, what the heck? And I tell you what, it's never ending with this their tech stuff. It's never ending. Here we go. The simplest way to connect with us is through the website, TomMatShow.com. We have put a tremendous amount of energy into that. Sandy's on that thing constantly with um, Cinnamon, our, our account executive who handles that for us. And it's it's all good. All of our social media is there. Any social media that you prefer to connect with us, Please do. We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. We're on all of them. Instagram. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit more into back into Twitter again. Uh, you know, it's just X. You know, X. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. The, thanks, Craig. That's uh, the X. That X thing. Um, 
just just sharing it out there so that people can find us. So whatever flavor floats your boat. But the best way is just to go to the website in the contact box there and just send us a note. If you've got a question for any of our guests or a suggestion or or you got a rant or whatever, just send us a note. I mean, I get them. I get notes on TikTok all the time. My hashtag dad talks are over there and those hashtag dad talks. Forewarn everyone, there is a little bit of language there because I get a little irate sometimes about things, but that's the whole point of the hashtag dad talks. It's like Tom doing his coaching the way I do my coaching. It's like 200% students that I work with tell me you got one speed, you're 200%. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I don't mean to be, you know, out there, but yeah, I mean, it's, and it's the same message over and over and over. Please go there because we're all about the refinement zone is, the three C's of community collaboration and cooperation. It's all good sharing stories and ideas like we're doing with my pal, my brother from another mother, Craig Styles. Craig, so you got you started peeling the, the uh, onion back with uh, uh, some techie stuff and some uh, financial techie stuff, at least with equities and inflation. And because you got this like triple quadruple whammy going on here with this and you got supply chain from 2022 2021 you got all of these factors that are baking into this this inflation situation you know you see fuel prices doing this kind of stuff up and down and up and down and it's just it's that's why i love having you as our advisor because it's like i don't even sweat this stuff man i i know you know what you're doing and that's the whole point everybody that's the whole point of why you want to call craig i can't emphasize that enough because this stuff you do not want to be a day trader i guarantee you that is not a good path for success all right there pal, pal let's uh let's continue the conversation talking about fixed income macro versus micro where are we going now well, the point that I was even leading up to um, uh, at, towards the end of the last segment was kind of giving a feel for what's been going on in the markets and uh, for a lot of clients who, if they're already in, in a, a, an investment strategy, the focus on three, five, and seven years helps to remove the focus from the current volatility that we have experienced. So the institutional strategies that we've been implementing, emphasis being on three, five, and seven years, that's that longer term focus needs to stay in that focus, if you will, because any short-term adjustment or adjustments made, that's when, quite frankly, that's when you start jumping out of one portfolio that's dropped down, and then you get into another portfolio that looked good historically, you get into it, and then that one drops down going forward. It says, we have to have faith and confidence in why are we selecting a portfolio strategy to begin with, and make sure that if we do make any adjustments or changes, is it going to be a benefit going forward as it relates to the portfolios. Now, the kind of the trifecta, for lack of a better term, um, that we see with new money coming in today, yields are higher, CD rates are higher, treasury notes are higher, money market funds are higher. So the yields being north of 5% makes it worthwhile for if a client's adding money to it and we anticipate funds to drop, that may make sense to do because if you're adding $100,000 to a portfolio, that's going to give you, right now, you could lock in five to $6,000 in income off a $100,000 investment that is rather low risk because you're going to get that money coming back. So you're seeing that in short duration type CDs, treasury notes, um, money market funds that are giving you good yield. We keep hearing higher for longer right now from the feds, again, that macro view. So if it's going to be higher for longer, it may make sense to put money into a money market fund that is yielding five and between five and five and a half percent because that's providing you with daily liquidity. So new money can go into that areas. Secondly, if there's longer term views, um, the opportunity within dividend paying securities, even though dividend paying or value stocks held their own last year, they're down this year. They were down in 2020 for uh, quite a bit. They had some rebound in 2021. They helped to cushion a portfolio in 2022. Now in 2023, growth has had a lot of volatility. Value type strategies have dipped. In many cases, they're down anywhere from five to 7% year to date. Opportunity of being able to put new money into the, those types of value strategies. The opportunity there is increasing your yield on dividend stocks and then buying into stocks that are at a low having the opportunity for a longer term portfolio that's going to outpace performance relative to the fixed income investments that we talked about. And then thirdly, growth has had the level of volatility 
more specifically in these last um, three months. So you've seen the peaks from July, um, the NASDAQ dropping 15 to 20% from the peak in July. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average also dipping uh, into negative territory from its peak in July. Same thing for the S&P 500. So those who are looking for additional growth, adding money to a growth strategy also is another opportunity that we're seeing because growth also will perform well when we anticipate interest rates um, starting to go down, uh, if if not staying flat. Because, I mean, the markets right now are, are <laughs> basically the kind of waffling today, down a little bit today as we're talking. Um, but yesterday, or excuse me, I, at the end of last week, they closed up um, because they saw that, again, the feds had their their comments of, hey, it looks like we're going to gonna hold interest rates flat uh, or should say steady. We're not going to raise them anymore. But then had kind of a hawkish tone that if we see the numbers uh, for unemployment and everything else show that the economy is still rather strong, then we may consider raising the rates one more time before the end of the year. Um, but right now, when the uh, unemployment rate came in lower than expected, you saw the markets jump, you know, one, one and a half percent the following day, um, which would lead to, I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where does it, bad news means good news. How can bad news, unemployment, be good news for the markets? And that's where they start to focus on that macroeconomics and the impact of what um, the government has on uh, kind of the influence of borrowing costs and legacy costs that many of the firms and organizations may have. And if the feds kind of keep the, keep the interest rates stable, businesses can then make decisions, which is done at the micro level. And when they do that, then the focus is no longer at the macro level, the government level. It is now mo focused more at what businesses are going to be the most opportune during this environment we find ourselves in. So again, focusing on three, five, and seven years, what strategies have performed the best? That's always going to be fluctuating behind the scenes. But it helps me to like utilize industrial analytics. I use that to help me gauge what criteria is best, how important, uh, basically try to mirror or measure what research our research department is, is highlighting, but then how do I translate what they are suggesting into more of a, a technical evaluation of what I have to make a recommendation for clients. So. So spot on. I mean, did you notice everybody that I didn't say a word for like about six <laughs> minutes? I'm going to close this segment because this is very, very important to pay attention to. And so that's why we have Craig, and Craig is our guy, and that's why you need to pay attention to all of these things. We've got an election coming up next year. We've got all kinds of factors that are going to be baking into the 2024 prognostication. I'm going to let Craig finish his threads with the 2022-2023 recap, and then we will vault into the prognostications, the looking forward to good things. It's all about perception, and, and I'll tell you guys, I had a student come up to me today and I'll close the segment. I had a student come up to me today and say, why is everything hard? And I said, you know what? Everything is not hard. It's a perception. If you perceive that it's hard, then it's hard. But if you perceive it as being good, then it's good. It's all mental. That's where I was coming. And he looked at me and was, he was like, he was, thought I was like some wisdom man or something. I'm like, no, man, I'm just telling you, I've just been around a while. It's just, this, it's all perception. It's all perception. Craig Styles here, 2023 year in review, 2024 crystal ball. I'm Tom Matt, and this is the Tom Matt Show. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, yeah, everything's hard. So now go over there and pick up that 400 pound dumbbell. Here's the thing. What I told him. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> it's really interesting because he came to me and his name's Eric. He's a Hispanic kid. Yep. And I said, he was like, well, why is school so hard? And I said, okay, first off, again, perception, but you're at a, a, a really an elite institution here. This is a very hard institution. This is not like podunk you. This is a mm -hmm. big Ten university and they're power five conferences, all of this stuff. I said, so, but you were admitted, you were accepted. You're here. You're in this gym. I said, people can come into this gym and say, it's always so hard in here. I look at this place as this is my fountain of youth. This is my, right. 
this is fun. I enjoy this. Do you enjoy this? He goes, oh, yeah. I said, well, then this isn't hard, right? No, I guess you're right. So everything is not hard. It's just a perceptual thing. Yeah. You know what? And challenges are good to, it's oh, like yeah. you're building resiliency is not, I'm doing videos on this, you know, the softening of our young people. It's like, guys, stop. We're making our kids soft and it's not helping them. It just drives me nuts. Okay, hold well, on. Me... It's, that's the part that I'm blessed with how my kids have one the tough tough kids, right? Oh yeah, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's like you have a two parent household. You have um, you they've played sports. They've they've competed. They they know how they they know how to work. I mean, they know how to get their blisters on their hands and what the hell a blister is. I mean, and... some kids don't even know what a blister is. It's just nuts. All right, here we go. Fourth segment of this radio program, Tom Matt Show, is sponsored by Brock, 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 the selling team of Keller Williams Realty. Love him. He's awesome. Again, full disclosure, we use our sponsors. Our sponsors, we utilize their services because we trust them. We want you to trust them. Call me. Send me a note. Send me an email. Send me a text. My number's everywhere. I mean, it's been the same number for, I don't know, 20 years now. Call me. If you got questions on this stuff, I will be happy to give you the lowdown. But why don't you just go to the website and look at the reality of real estate or financial fitness and talk and listen to how we talk about all of these topics? Because Brock is our guy. A couple numbers again coming at you here. 517-853-6408. That's the office number. And then there's the super secret number to his pocket. That's his cell phone that he changes all the time. I heard one of my reads one of my talking points for my uh, segment sponsors yesterday when I was listening to WKR and it was like, Brock is really good about changing his messages. People may say, why are you talking about this? The reason I do that is because I was a telecom professional for like a long, long, long time. And I, I really am very I admire people, professionals out there who take their diligent about this. They want to get back to you. They want you to be serviced the right way. That's why Craig's on the show. That's why Brock's on the show. And that's why you want to go to Keller Williams. 517-303-3262. Go online, KW Selling Team. Dot com. Most agents start marketing after you list with them. Not these guys. I mean, Mike Dedman, guy was our buyer's agent for Little House Lansing, where we're recording this episode right now. Brock, Brock, Brock was our guy. He was our seller's agent for Big House Holt, thank God, and hit the number right on the dot. I mean, it was just amazing. And, and when you don't have to think about these things, and you go get advice from knowledgeable people that you can trust. It's like it takes all of that anxiety for me anyways, it takes all of that anxiety and anxiousness away. You want to go to people you can trust because if you got to, if you're, you, you know, you're looking at them kind of sideways and it's like, you know, how long you been doing this and this kind of, that's where the anxiety comes from. Go to people you can find, go to people you can trust. That's our guys, Brock Fletcher, Craig Stiles, selling team Keller Williams Realty. And again, full disclosure, we utilize both of our sponsors services and we are proud to say that. All right, back to Craig, 2023 year in review. This is a financial fitness episode as Craig is here for his 24th visit. Reason that he's been on this show 24 times because he's so dang good and he knows his stuff. That's the whole point of this thing. Craig, are we done with the uh, review stuff or do you want to you want to wrap that little bow on that bad boy and you want to start talking about some prognostication? Because we got big things coming with the election next year and it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think I think basically the wrap up has been um, just the opportunity with new money for clients. We have new money coming in, um, the opportunities that they have speaking with their advisor, either taking advantage of some of the income that can be generated, locking in some CDs. Um, but also, if they're looking at a little bit longer term, the opportunities within growth strategies right now that have had a pullback within the last three months. And then, of course, value strategies to take advantage of not only appreciation within the stock of of quality companies that have uh, depreciated in value, but also buying into it, allowing for the opportunity for growth, but also getting higher uh, dividend yields uh, within the portfolio. So, yeah, that's that's basically um, what I would what the opportunities have been for 2023. But if you're already in a solid strategy, you haven't got necessarily new money to add to it. Sticking with the strategy that you presently have, that's where the confidence comes in. And um, 
addressing with individuals that are out there. Anybody who's invested in the markets, I view them basically as an entrepreneur. You're investing into the business. That's what you're doing. Like Tom, the Tom Matt show, that's your business. But in the same respect, when you retire, you got to supplement your income that you've been working so hard for. And that portfolio has got to grow just like a business has to grow. You're going to be drawing money from that, just like a business owner draws from their business to sustain their lifestyle and, and continue on. At some point, you want to gonna, you're going to want to go on and do something different. That's when we come in. I make the comment that everything that we do, everything that we do, our clients can do by themselves. Just like an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur typically starts by themselves. Everything they have to do from emptying out the trash can to go out and building new business or, or getting new clientele base, whatever it is, everything that we do, a client can do. Buying and selling stocks, coming up with their own strategies, how to get in, that's all entirely up to them. At some point, when they've built their business to a certain level, they want to go off and do other things and need to hire somebody to come in. And that's what our process is. We come in, we kind of act as a CFO for many of our clients to help them manage. And that's where, like you're mentioning earlier, the tough questions come up to where, all right, what's going on within the environment and how your portfolio is invested because that's your business. And we need to be able to protect and preserve that business. Yet we need to get it to grow and meet all the needs of what the clients are, are calling for. And that's where the tough conversations are had, the truth, candor and everything. So like everybody, yeah. it's like anything else, everybody, it's every individual, every family is different. And so your model is going to be a little bit different. That's where the desiderary model, the, the algorithm comes in. What Craig was talking about is so effective because it, it really assists Craig and his experts in giving them the, the tools that they need to make these decisions and really understand what's going on in the, in the markets. And so, Hey, you know, that's a, That was a good recap on all that. Craig, we got a, about two minutes to go before we go to break yeah. here. We're going to lose the, we're going to lose some of our uh, listeners, and I want to apologize to those listeners out there that don't get the fifth segment. Tell your radio station you want to get the fifth segment, or go to our podcast and get the fifth segment. But we're going to start off right here with the prognostication. Craig can kind of set this up. we got a minute and a half to go. Set it up so that people want to go get the podcast if, if they want to hear your prognostication for 2023, 2024, end of 2023, and the beginning of 2024 and the whole year. Go ahead, Craig. It, well, 2024 isn't going to be, I mean, my my thoughts on 2024 isn't, isn't going to be too different than that of 2023, because a lot of the things that they do today, especially with new money, is going to go through 2024. So if they're able to get some, um, um, some basically some CDs or, or anything along those lines, you can ex actually extend that out through 2024. So that's going to provide with uh, opportunities for solid income, low risk investment that's going to give them some yield if they don't want to deal with some areas of volatility. It is an election year. And so the elections are, again, the macro view of what's going on, how policy changes is going to impact um, some of the markets going forward. So depending on what those policies are going to be, um, will dictate whether or not we continue on with the macro view of our economy, or if there's going to be policy changes that's going to shift and we're going to start having to look more at the micro view start being looking at more local, more business oriented. Um, again, that dynamic and expectations of 2024, um, that is going to be kind of what um, our expectations are going to be. We do, we do think we're going to have more growth. The question is how much we've seen some growth. Um, we've seen some growth take place um, this year. The growth strategy is about perform. We've seen a pullback again over the last three, four months. And then uh, we anticipate that we're going to have kind of growth heading out of this year and then continue on into 2024. So that opportunity for uh, new money coming in, I would more than likely be focusing on some growth strategies. Um, that may be <laughs> kind of in defensive sectors. So um, yeah, to, to get more information on that, I'd be more than happy to take some phone calls that, to be able to get into some details and whatnot. So um, yeah, so our, our expectations for 2024, um, continue on with the volatility within the markets because it is an election year. Um, and if you don't want to have that level of volatility and you got new money coming in, I would suggest probably putting that into some fixed income, maybe some money market funds that are giving you the higher yields that you can get out of when interest rates, we anticipate interest rates to start to drop. And I think the feds mentioned that um, they were planning on four 
drops next year. I think they've cut it down to two. So, well, we'll see about all of that. I, I, yep. I, we could do a whole show. We're going to come up on break here. So I recap this thing again, 2023 year in review, 2024 crystal ball. Craig just set the table for this one and we could play with this whole idea with this, because I, I, I don't understand the whole inflation number and they come to these numbers and we can talk about that a little bit too. You know, they have this 2% goal and it's like, well, who, who comes up with these arbitrary numbers and how is that all designed and where do they get these models from and, and so forth and so on. I mean, it's just, to me, it's, it's very confusing. That's why it's great to have a pro helping you, assisting you with these decisions because there's, it's complicated. I mean, it's really complicated. And even if you're younger, you want to really pay attention to this stuff because this can affect you long term. Take it from a guy who got some advice from a friend at Michigan State University about my supplemental retirement, which I didn't even know what the heck that was. And mm -hmm. he said, our money into save, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. We come back, we're going to talk about paying yourself first a little bit with Craig and the prognostication. Again, 2023 year in review, 2024 crystal ball, financial fitness, Craig Styles, Tom Matt, this is the Tom Matt Show. What was that point I just said? I just forgot what the hell I was going to say. Uh, Rewind. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> keep rocking and rolling. Okay, this is your uh, plug, plug, plug segment there, brother. So, got all your stuff there? Because if you don't, I do. Well, I guess I got it memorized for my, I got the five. I don't have the 800 number. I don't have that memorized. So got it. I got it. I'll, I'll throw that in there for you. Here we go. Right. Financial fitness is our episode category topic today, everybody with our financial fitness guru, Craig Stiles. You're probably wondering how do you get a hold of Craig Stiles? And when I was still employed full-time at the university, which I'm still employed kind of at the university. I mean, I'm out there doing stuff all the time wink wink people came to me and said how do i get a hold of craig like we like listening how do we find craig a lot of people a lot of people from the university reached out to me and you know every everybody who's i have not had one person ever ever <laughs> call me back and say wow that was a bad lead <laughs> so <laughs> And as I'm recording the video here, I'm raising my right hand. I put my hand on the Bible. It's the fact. Craig, 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 how do people find you? How do you want them to connect with you? And I've got the 800 number. I'll do that last. Well, the best the, the, the best way is you can basically reach out. Um, give me a call. I mean, locally, it's 517-483-4893. Again, 517-483-4893. You can send me an email at Craig, C R A I G dot styles s-t-i-l-e-s at ampf.com um so that website or your that email address is a way of doing it you can also just google my name and ameriprise and that will come up to my website and you can actually uh, reach out to me that way as well to to uh schedule a, a, an appointment or a meeting so um there is kind of ask some personal information in regards to what specifically you're looking for and then there we're able to follow back up and, and coordinate a, a time for us to get together over the next couple of weeks. So the end of the year is kind of uh, is approaching pretty quickly. So from that standpoint, things that we're doing right now is doing a lot of tax harvesting for clients with taxable accounts to minimize their tax liabilities for gains we would have realized earlier in the year due to distributions. And so um, it's it's kind of getting busy. So if after, uh, I mean, begin being as November, next month is December with the holidays and everything else. Um, but if we want to get things on the books after the first of the year, we can still do that and get something coordinated and scheduled. So wonderful. 800-528-1355. That's 1-800-528-1355. And also TomMatShow.com at the bottom of that page, homepage is Craig's banner. You can go there. That's really simple. And, or if you want to go to the contact box and say, Hey, have Craig, at I'll be happy to do that as well. Mm -hmm. I will forward everything through Sandy monitors that website constantly. Mm -hmm. And that goes right into the show email. All right. So higher performance, you know, this thing about this, these inflation numbers and all of this, 
these, these, I, I think of them as arbitrary and this kind of gets us a little bit off topic, but maybe, maybe not um, for 2024. And you say things are going to stay the kind of the same, this inflation thing does raising, this is a question that I've been wanting to ask you for a while. Mm. To your opinion, does raising interest rates really affect inflation? Because this inflationary period that we went through was not from, it was too much money in the supply and we had a supply chain nightmare with the pandemic. So those two factors alone caused a bump in inflation. And then they, so they come in and they want to correct all this stuff, but does it, does that actually, in your opinion, Craig, and I didn't, you had no idea I was going to throw this question to you, <laughs> but looking at 2024, does that, does that work? I mean, maybe it worked in the seventies and the eighties, but I think that there's, there's gotta be better monetary policy where people can buy homes and not have to pay, you know, 10%. I, I don't know. What's your opinion? Um, well, that's a, that's a great question because when you sit there and think of the impact and the creation of inflation, there's kind of a full inflation and then there's a real inflation. And, um, and, and again, from, from my perspective, when what's that distinction between what is full inflation and what is real inflation? Real inflation, when you're looking at a particular product, again, going back to the microeconomics of product development uh, for a business, what can they build at a reasonable price? Like, how do you price what that product is? It's like what a person's willing to pay for it. Right. So if you have a product, what, what, whatever the person is willing to pay, and if you can make this product and make a profit on it, then that's what people want to put. If you price it too high, then people aren't going to buy it. If you price it too low, then supply is going to go up and you're going to have too much demand and you may not be able to meet demand. But then when you do meet demand, then you may have too much product. And so in order to sell the product, you got to decrease the uh, uh, reduce the price. So a lot of factors of expense tied to expense for building a product goes to the inflation of a particular product, right? That's kind of at the micro level. At the macro level, when you have multiple products, like for example, fuel, it's, I always find it interesting that, hey, inflation is, is doing what it's supposed to, as long as you take out food and fuel, right? Well, right. how does food get made? from farmers. What do farmers use to mass produce all of their food? Tractors, semi-trucks, diesel. When the fuel price increases, that's gonna increase the cost of every step along the way for food. And then you try to take out fuel from the cost of inflation. Well then trucks are what transport everything. So this is kind of a simple view that then drives inflation for the cost of products that are being transported utilizing fuel-based vehicles, right? So everyone's trying to look at the most efficient way of transporting product, hence, hence the reason why supply chain is always an important component when it comes to uh, efficiencies within a system, an economic system. Now you have the macro component, the macro component is what the government basically did. And that created somewhat of a full inflation because you had a government that controls interest rates that allow businesses to be able to borrow if they want to expand to create a product. Well, if you have the government saying, all right, we have a pandemic going on, we're going to stop you from manufacturing this product and keep everybody home. Well, then we're going to pay the people to stay home. And then those people who are getting paid to stay home, they're going to buy stuff. If they go on and buy stuff, but they're not making it, that creates a bottleneck, which then prices go up rather rapidly. And then you have a wide variety of issues because then you've kind of got a system that got muddied up, for lack of a better term. And so all of 2020 was a creation of that muddied up water. 2021 and 2022 was kind of cleaning it up to figure out what's going on. 2023 was kind of having more of a normalization of, of, all right, we're starting to get back to the fundamentals of the market, but we're still viewing things from a macro perspective. 2024, I think we're going to be more of a focus in the, in the micro view, but it is an election year. So depending on 
on the policies and the the um, leaders of each party, how they're going to talk about the the economies of scale, if you will, and the the implementation. Because now we're now we're dealing with debt. We have a massive amount of debt at the federal level, and how we're going to pay that down. All right. So growth opportunities um, in 2024. The impact of 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 that on inflation. They're trying to bring an inflation rate down. Why? Why are we looking at the inflation rate of 2.3%? Because it's, it's a manageable growth. We need to have a level of growth of within the economy. And uh, if it grows too quickly, then um, that's going to that's gonna create a, a kind of a, a bubble, if you will, depending on whatever the markets is. So if we have too rapid of a growth that takes place, um, then inflation we need to try to stem that. And that's why they start to raise interest rates to try to get inflation to come down to a more, more level now, uh, more of a sustainable level. That's, that's a very academic um, understanding, if you will, of what goes on and what creates inflation, interest rates. Those numbers I have come up through academia, through a lot of different <laughs> um, theories and methods. And so from that perspective, they like to see a target of 2.3% because if you go faster than inflation rate, then we got to start to try to peel that back, if you will. So, All right, Craig, what's your takeaway for this episode? Because we got to, I'm going to give you a minute and a half to have a, a, a little, a little bit of time to kind of recap, because you said a lot in this episode, yeah. and if you any of it, everybody go back and get the podcast. There's an excellent, excellent primer on what's going on in the past and what, Craig sees coming in the future. And again, Craig Styles is our guy and he's got all our retirement money. What's your recap? Um, basically, I mean, the biggest thing is trying to be prepared for the unexpected. A lot of stuff that happened over the last couple of years definitely was unexpected. And a lot of the plans that I've put in place for clients when I'm trying to make sure that they have most tools available from access to home equity line of credits to locking in mortgage rates when the interest rates are low. Um, if, if a person was planning on paying off a mortgage, then, you know, have a second thought on that and start to build up their wealth in other areas. So even from where do you save your money? Do you save it in, retire in, in retirement assets or are we starting to build things outside of retirement it's because there's pros and cons in every decision? This gives an individual an opportunity to figure out how best to grow their wealth going forward and what plan or investment discipline is going to be most appropriate for them uh, coming into 2024. Perfect. 1-800-528-1355. If you're in Florida or California, you can use that number and Craig will put you in touch with one of his colleagues throughout the country and or he will help you himself. It's it's an, an awesome opportunity to get people. You got to build a good team when it comes to your financial fitness. You got to have a good team. If our show fits your business or group's mission, we want to be of service to you. That's why we do this radio program. We want to help people get better, get better, get better. Sponsorships are available. You can hit us up, but you got to meet our criteria. If you're like a Craig, you might have a shot. Okay. I'm not trying to be anything out of the box here, but that's the way it goes. Thanks to Craig styles, Sandy, Brock, have a great week, everybody. Remember, before you can share love with others, you must, must love yourself first. And lastly, I got to say thank you to Mitch Anderson, our producer of this radio program. He keeps everything together and sends it out all over the place. We are done. We are out. And remember, the Tom Ash Show is a production of Boomers Rock Media. We want to bring your story to life. Thank you so much for joining us. Craig Styles is the bomb. Check out Ameriprise. Go to our homepage and click on his link. We're done. I got a young woman I'm working with I'm coaching. I actually met her through her sister. And I think I'm going to, I think I've got her um, dialed in for position at MSU. She's a, she's, she's got some IT experience, got a associates and she got a bunch of IT experience and, uh, but they're going to be slow. And she met with our um, assistant director, Linda Way Helm. Um, we had lunch last week and I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm going to put your name out there to some of my other, some of my friends, because the posting will probably go up in January and you know how slow they are. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I wonder if Craig could use somebody um, and just on the knowledge that she's trying to get into MSU, that's the game plan, but right. be interested in meeting with a young woman just to, um, kind of see, because I know you said you had some succession planning going on 
And um, I don't know if that fits what you're doing, but I told her I would mention it to you and we'll see how it goes. So are you, are you interested with meeting with anyone like that or how's your succession planning going for? Um, like with the, with the whole, like in my, like bringing someone out of my team and everything. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, at, at this point, we haven't made any uh, major decisions as it relates to what the, what that next step's going to look like. Um, so yeah, from, from the aspect of our, of our business platform, we're not in a position to make any adjustments or changes or bring people on yet. Um, so I'd probably hold off on that. I mean, I'd be happy to entertain any questions or that she might have, especially if she's looking at trying to get into the industry itself. Um, so she's I know IT, she's an IT person, so she's going to go, she, she's going to get hired at MSU. I'm pretty sure yeah. of that. Yeah. And so that's that's where her expertise is her sister's a computer science major too so yep. they're both kind of coming from that area math kids right. yep so i just thought i'd bring that out there. what i think might be good is her meeting you and just to kind i as i've told these young women it's like listen you get in front of professionals and you do these face-to-face -face, yep it really helps you polish your confidence yep. and it can help you because there's a lot of people out there that are good people and so if you're interested in perhaps um, I could set up a lunch down the road. She's, yeah. she's actually moving to mid Michigan though. She doesn't live in this area, but she's gave her notice and she's moving up here. going to stay with her sister for a month. Yeah. And then, uh, so I told her, I said, you need to get around better people. And yep. on that, the girls made tremendous she's 25 years old, made tremendous changes in her life. But some of these kids, they get dealt just raw freaking yep. deal. And it's yep. just, it's just not, cool and i'm just like you know what i want to help these people yep. and so i'll uh i'll be I'm, I'm happy to, to sit down and have a chat with her and at least talk about big picture stuff so um from that perspective and even even if between now and then opportunities come up you know whether it's not either with us but there's other organizions right there well, that's, that, and that's the thing and and as she's coming in like linda way was saying that our assistant director they're looking for people they can train yep. they would don't want people coming in with know-it-all attitudes and wanting the big dot they they want and it's we want younger people we need the right. younger talent to come in to fill the pipeline and right. learn learn all of the ropes but again meeting good people in this area never hurts and you're right. one of my guys so it's like it's all you know it's just i i love introducing these people to good people and so right. because they've been around bad people for so long that they, you know, everybody, they become conditioned that this is the way the world works. I'm like, no, that's not the way that world works. The world works in mysterious ways. And I connect people. That's what we do. Yep. That's it. All right, brother. Awesome. You the man. All right, sir. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. I'll let you know. Peace out. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a good one. Take your time. Tell, tell Stephanie I said hello. Will do. Absolutely. Yep, bye-bye now. Craig Styles the bomb. I mean, just, I can't say enough about the guy. I, I it, It's so easy for me to have these conversations about not worrying about our retirement zone savings because that's a big deal. I mean, it's a big freaking deal, everybody. So he's the guy. He, he I mean, I you can have your people out. That's great. You find somebody you trust. Great. Stick with them. But if you're looking, if you're, if you're not happy with the performance of what's been happening because it's been so volatile, think about it. I'm Tom Matt. And we're out. Peace out. Love y'all. Thank you so much for watching, listening, doing all that good stuff. We appreciate you all.